Hello. Today we're going to continue our stories of the early history of the Sioux City Art Center. And in, at that point, of course, it was still known as the Sioux City Society of Fine Arts. In the first story, we talked about the importance of Alice Lawler, who was the first director, first curator, first educator, first everything uh, for the Society of Fine Arts when it was founded in 1914, and she remained with the society into the mid-1930s. So the society, by well into the teens, was doing everything that an art center, an art museum would do regarding exhibitions, programs, and starting a collection. In the early 1920s, they realized the next step to become a full-fledged art center was to add in classes. So in 1922, they began teaching classes. And it was a really convenient time for them to begin that process because the, the focal point of today's story is an artist whose name is Gus Nelson. Officially, he's Carl Gustav Nelson, who signs his artworks usually C.G. Nelson. But he was known primarily as Gus. So Gus Nelson was born in Sweden in 1898 and came to Sioux City as a little boy with his family in the early 1900s. And he, uh, during his teen years, uh, began working at Davidson Brothers department store in the print shop, doing drawing as part of his job. It was because of the support, the encouragement from both his customers and his co-workers that he decided to go into art. And so he went to the Art Institute of Chicago to study. In 1921, he had just completed his studies at the Art Institute and that was right at the time that Alice was talking about bringing in classes to the society's programs. So they talked about what they could offer and decided in the summer of 1922 to offer classes taught out at Riverside Park with an emphasis, of course, on landscapes and other types of paintings and drawings that you might do in the outdoors. Gus ended up going off to the Art Students League throughout most of the 1920s but he would, re he would return to Sioux City each summer to teach classes for the society. And the most memorable of these summers was the summer of 1925. Uh, along with the outdoor classes that they offered, they decided to do something special. They took what was a storage room at the library where their office was uh, and converted that storage room into an inside classroom for their first classes where they would focus on things like still life portraits and life drawing, specifically nude figure drawing. So they spent the summer working on primarily drawings uh, in that space. And at the end of the summer, they decided to see if they could find a place to exhibit the work that the students had done. They found space on the eighth floor of the Woodbury County Courthouse for a show of dozens of drawings that the students had done. Gus was very proud of the work. He thought it looked spectacular. They worked to get it matted very nicely, so it looked like a professional exhibition of the student work of Sioux City. And people did go to the show. It opened in September, uh, just for a week. But people started to talk pretty quickly uh, after that first day of opening that there were nudes as part of the exhibition. So crowds began to build, attention began to grow, and it rose to the attention of the Woodbury County Council, where one of the members of the council was outraged and declared that the nudes were going to be removed from the exhibition. And this was a couple days into that week-long show, and there was some kind of a delay between his announcement of removing the nudes and the actual removal of the nudes. Because the next day, the crowds were enormous. Uh, of course, there was an elevator to go up to the courthouse. They decided to try to keep some kind of control over the crowd and the, the delicate eyes of the youth of the day that children were forbidden to use the elevators, thinking that would clamp down on their access to the eighth floor exhibition of the nudes. But it didn't stop them. There were still steps, there were still fire escapes, 
they still found their way up to see the sensationalized exhibition. Eventually the nudes were removed and uh, they were held safely. It's not like they were destroyed. They were simply handed over to Alice Lawler who retained them until the end of the show when they were handed back with the other works to the students. So that was the most dramatic thing that probably happened in the, in the 1920s. Gus himself would complete his studies um, and would uh, go on to become a very successful artist and instructor. In the early years of the Whitney Museum, he was in three Whitney Biennials. He earned a Tiffany Foundation grant to study in Europe. And he would actually return to Sioux City a couple times to have large exhibitions of his work. One of the things that, that I think is especially humorous is that some of the biggest publicity that the nude exhibition got was from Des Moines. Uh, they devoted the front page of the of the Register's magazine uh, on, in September 25th, 1925 to the backwoods story of Sioux City banning nudes from public view, uh, making fun of us. In 1940, uh, Gus Nelson had a large exhibition of his work organized and it was supported by the WPA so that it toured different art venues throughout the state of Iowa. One of those was the Des Moines Art Center and then it came to the Sioux City Art Center. But by 1940, Gus's style had changed. He went from the uh, early landscapes and outdoor scenes that you can see in, in some of the works that uh, we've illustrated uh, up through the more humorous types of uh, artworks, such as One Ring Circus, which is over my right shoulder, and ventured into abstraction. It was described in the papers as very modern, and that was a very negative thing to be. So it was apparently so negative that when it was shown in, in Des Moines, five of his paintings were vandalized. So while Sioux City might have had a brief moment in terms of being Philistine in the ways of what good art is, Des Moines had theirs 15 years later. <laughs>